Mark in North Carolina, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Mark. Hey, what's going on, Ben? How you doing today? Hey, doing pretty well. Go for it, sir. <laughs> um, I actually, I wanted to ask, with what Virginia is attempting to pass through their, their legislature, I know it passed on the one side, and now they're trying to get it through where whatever happens with the popular vote of the country, would that's where they would send their electoral votes. Is that something that even if they pass on both sides of the, the state house, that they can actually push through for the 2020 election with it being, you know, a state affair affecting what would be a national, you know, federal level? Is yes. that something that can actually happen? They can. The, the electors are chosen on the state level. So it, it is not it is not a, a federal requirement that electors be chosen in any particular way. In fact, theoretically, you could have a state that that through its electoral vote decided to do it proportionally, I believe. So I, I don't think there are mm-hmm. specific constitutional provisions on point as to what a state itself can do. The, the assumption was always that a state was going to to not make it proportional because then that actually waters down its impact, right? I mean, it, it, if you were to be Virginia right, and let's right. say somebody won 50 to 45, your impact basically becomes a net of maybe one electoral vote or something. So it, it's right. it, people sort of assumed that, that states would not do this specifically because basically Virginia is now saying that it doesn't matter in the presidential election, right? right? We, don't, we don't care what our people, we don't care what our people in Virginia think. We're just going to go with the vast majority, hence California, New York, you know, the, the populace, and then got to love the whole voter ID. Oh, well, we don't want to check IDs. But, yeah, I mean, hey, it's, it's, know, it's bewildering. It, it, is what it, is. It, it is the state of Virginia mm-hmm. effectively writing itself out of the, of the Electoral College because, again, there are only a couple scenarios here. One is that Virginia votes the same way as the Electoral College, in which case, the in which case there is no problem, right? If they vote, or rather, Virginia votes the same way as the popular vote, in which case there really is no no right. generalized problem. Or Virginia votes differently mm-hmm. than the popular vote, in which case Virginia is now overriding the will of its own voters in order to right. help out whoever won the popular vote, which is a very weird thing to do and defeats the purpose of the electoral college. Generally, I guess it's a backwards way of of blue states trying to basically make the electoral college useless. I, I guess they're basically saying right. we don't want the electoral college to to rule anymore, but. That's one of the reasons the founders never thought it would happen. They figured that states were going to be pretty zealous about their own interests. One of the areas in which the founders vastly underestimated the capacity of national parties to override the interests of state parties. Mark, really appreciate your call. Blake in Mississippi, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Blake. Hey, Ben. Um, I'm much like you. I was was very anti-Trump. I just thought he was a a fool. I thought he could never win. And uh, if he would have taken my advice, he would have lost. And I think if he would have taken your advice, he would have lost. So... How can you give him advice now on what he definitely should and should not be doing? Well, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, I, I refuse to suggest that if, if he had taken my advice, he, he would have lost. I, I don't think that's right. I think that we could have done without some of the more outrageous commentary and kept with the the good commentary. Right? My, my model all through the election was good that's Trump, fair. bad Trump. So more good Trump and less bad Trump probably would have helped him. Um, as far as giving Trump advice, uh, you know, like it, it, let's, let's put it this way. If he has better instincts than I do then so be it. But I think that all the people around him are urging him basically the same thing that, that I am. And frankly, I think that any objective observer can see when he's damaging himself, including including people who are very close to President Trump. You know, you're not the best judge in your own case always. Is Trump going to listen to me? No. I mean, Trump doesn't listen to anybody, but that's that, and that's his prerogative. And I get it. I mean, the man is is in excess of 70 years old. He's done nothing but win. And so why would he listen to anybody who is not Donald Trump but I will say this, the, the, when it comes to the presidency, what got you there is not necessarily what keeps you there. And this is why you've seen presidents really shift tack. I mean, to take the most obvious example, Bill Clinton, right? Bill Clinton enters office with a plurality, but not a majority of the vote. And he enters office on the back of, we're basically going to do Hillary care, which is Obamacare. And then we are going to pass vast tax increases. And immediately he becomes wildly unpopular. And so he shifts tactics and starts endorsing half of the Republican plan. So in 1996, he skunks Bob Dole. I mean, understanding kind of the way that the, the tea leaves are moving, understanding you know, that, that politics is variable and that you have to shift as times change is one of the elements of being a, a good politician. Yes, you want to be constant in your principles, but you also want to know when you're making a mistake and shut up. And the, and the thing about, Blake, the thing for President Trump that's so irritating just as a political observer is that if you got the good Trump without the bad Trump, the guy would be unstoppable. Right? I mean, I think yeah. we all felt yeah. in the aftermath of the State of the Union address, like if we got this all the time, dude wins 55 to 60 percent of the vote, sweeps 46 states. Like we're talking about him as a great president of all time. If you got Trump, just what, State what, of the Union what, address version. 
if I may, the, the media, though, like they are so focused on the controversy that I think that bad is the new good. Like if you have a terrible performance, people will talk about it for a week. If you have a great performance, you might not, nobody might even talk about it. So Trump just dominates. It dominates the media and they just they can't get away from it. So I think that the media coverage of President Trump is, is going to happen no matter what. He is a fascinating character and it is a fascinating time. Yeah. I, I do think that, as I've said before, if the re- if the election is a referendum on Trump personally, he's got a problem. If the referendum is on the economy, he wins. If the referendum is on Bernie Sanders, he wins. So the referendum needs to be on anything but him personally. So anything he can do to sort of minimize that which people find off putting is going to be is going to be helpful to him. He is the incumbent president, obviously. I really appreciate the call, Blake. We're going to take more of your calls in just one second. But first, let us talk about why you should protect yourself in 2020. Okay, the reality is that digital security is just as important as every other type of security with which you are dealing. Okay, if you're dealing with with digital security problems, you need a VPN and you need a VPN now. You shouldn't leave your front door unlocked or your car unlocked. You wouldn't leave your property unprotected. Well, why exactly would you leave your internet activity unprotected? Go check out ExpressVPN. It's the best VPN on the market. Why? Well, first, ExpressVPN will not log your data. Watch out for those really cheaper free VPNs. They make money by selling your data to ad companies. ExpressVPN has developed its own technology called Trusted Server. It makes it impossible for their servers to log any of your information. Another quality is speed. Many of these VPNs will actually slow your internet connection, make it difficult for you to get your work done, not ExpressVPN. And finally, ExpressVPN, super easy to set up. You put it on your computer, click one button, and you are good to go. Protect yourself with the same VPN I trust and use. And if it's good enough for me, it is certainly good enough for everyone else. Use my link, expressvpn.com slash Ben today. Get an extra three months for free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash Ben. Visit E-X-P-R-E-S-S vpn.com slash Ben to learn more. Expressvpn.com slash Ben. We're taking your phone calls at 855-236-3228. Jason in Idaho, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Jason. Hi, Ben. Uh, it's, it's nice to be on the show. I'm a big fan. Um, my question is about Bernie Sanders and the media uh, treating him, I, I think, pretty unfairly lately. Uh, he almost won Iowa. He uh, He did win New Hampshire. And yet most mainstream media like refuses to acknowledge it. I saw a headline the other day that talked about Buttigieg and Warren and Klobuchar's performance and Bernie Sanders was not mentioned um, <laughs> covering New Hampshire. So I want to know if you think the media like legitimately forgets about Bernie Sanders, if you think they like are trying to, you know, intentionally mess him up in the election. Like, why do you think they just refuse to acknowledge that he's doing at least as well as everybody thought. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, that the media's take on on Bernie is obviously biased against Bernie, obviously. I think it's, it's hilarious that they weren't biased against Bernie for, for the 40 years when he was being an open communist, but now that he's actually on the first winning the nomination, they're suddenly like, oh, wait a second. What if we just pretend he's not the front runner? I talked about this yesterday with regard to MSNBC's Chuck Todd, who was literally saying, I'm not sure why he's the front runner. Well, he's the front runner because he won the most votes in Iowa and he won the most votes in New Hampshire. And presumably he's going to win the most votes in Nevada. And right now, he's probably going to win South Carolina, too. So, like, yes, he is the front runner. The media's refusal to acknowledge Bernie is wish casting. They're they're just attempting to wish into existence a competitor to Bernie Sanders who stops him from taking the nomination. At this point, I have a hard time seeing who that is, even if Bernie Sanders were to win a plurality of the delegates and not a majority, which is a significant possibility. Remember, the Democrats, unlike the Republicans, do not have winner take all primaries. So if Bernie continues to win 35 percent of the vote all the way through, he ends up with a plurality of delegates, not a majority of delegates. But. If he's the one who goes into the convention with the most delegates, they're going to give him the nomination. So the, the I do think just as the media are biased against Republicans, the media have suddenly decided that they are biased against Bernie Sanders, at least insofar as trying to kick the nomination to somebody more palatable like to them, a Pete Buttigieg or an Amy Klobuchar. Although I think that if it comes down to Sanders versus Bloomberg, I'll be curious to see if the media actually continues with its negative coverage of Bernie in, in quite the same way, Jason. It just seems to me that since uh, Donald Trump did so well um, and essentially got his way to the presidency through the Rust Belt using his, you know, populist, more populist stances, it seems to me like they would want to support somebody who on the left would be a populist and try and and try and, I guess, recreate Donald Trump's path. Well, I think the problem they have is that that Bernie is so far to the left. He's so radical that they are correctly fearful that Bernie will do much more poorly in a general election than he's been doing in the primary so far. Again, and and by the way, I don't want to be completely unfair to the media. It is a big story that Bernie's vote, vote share dropped from 60% in 2016 in New Hampshire down to 26%, meaning that the party is very split right now. 
that that does not mean that he's not the front runner. However, he is definitely the front runner. Jason, really appreciate the call. All righty, coming up, we're taking more of your calls at 855-236-3228. You're listening to The Ben Shapiro Show.